Hello everyone, Lego Fan 14 here with a brand new movie review. It's been a while since I've done one of these, and now it's time to talk about the movie, the movie of the year. It's time to talk about the most movie of the year, the one that, for some reason, is a weird internet trend. Now it's finally time to talk about the most movie of the year. Minions: The Rise of Gru. It's such a weird case here with the whole gentle minions thing. It's the first thing I want to talk about. Like, I've never seen this weird case of how people are literally taking a mean to reality showing up in suits or dressed as minions to watch this movie. And the fact that the movie was shown as if it was the greatest thing ever to the point that theaters actually had to not allow people dressed in formal wear to the movie. It was, it was just crazy. I've never seen something like that. At least it's doing well at the box office, but now it's time to talk about the movie on its own. Now, Minions The Rise of Crew is a really peculiar case when it comes to an animated movie, since it's a, pre a sequel to a prequel to the 2015 Minions movie, being a prequel to Despicable Me. But what's weird about The Rise of Crew is the fact that it waited two years to be released. Like, the movie's been finished since 2020, but Universal didn't want to risk losing money by releasing in 2020 when, when the COVID just striked. So they decided to wait on 2000, with 2020 to not release anything. I guess it makes sense. Disney pulled the plug on their theatrical release and focused on Disney Plus, releasing Soul on Disney Plus, the, their next Pixar movie. And that basically got Pixar to release their movies in streaming until recently, but we'll get to that later. But when it comes to Illumination, they decided to wait until it was the right moment to release their movies theatrically. Because we know that there's not much when it comes to spending on the movie's budget, but it's definitely when it comes to the box office, where Illumination shines the most. And just coming out of big successes, you can understand why they decided to push back the rise of Gru. Now, in 2021, where we already had it, animated movies released like Ryan the Last Dragon and Space Jam 2 and New Legacy by the time Minions was gonna release, Illumination said to push it back another year, two years now in 2022. And I guess it made sense because even if movies like Encanto and stuff like that did release, you can say that they still kind of underperformed considering the expectations. And let's be honest, we all know that Illumination wants at least maybe 800 million dollars of their movies so you can definitely see why they push back this movie but enough of talking about the movie getting pushed back and all this now it's finally out now that a lot of people already saw it it's probably going to be the highest grossing anime feature ever since COVID came so it's it or bad now before we begin this is a spoiler review i forgot to mention that in the title so if you haven't seen this movie i recommend clicking away from this video coming back when you saw it and, yeah, you've been warned, now let's begin. So, Minions, The Rise of Gru. I liked it. I saw it in theaters. It was either that or Lightyear, but <laughs> we ended up watching Minions. It, it was me and my family, okay? It was a family decision, and they wanted to watch Minions, and I kind of wanted to, so... Yeah, we ended up watching that movie, and it was fun. We missed the first ten minutes, so I'm not really sure what the first moments of the movie were, since... By the time we came, all the ads and trailers were already done, so I don't know. But when it comes to the movie itself, I, I have fun with it. I think it was a really cool idea. It was a really fun movie. But what's the story about? Well, the story is, well, about, as the title says, about Gru. This is Gru's origin story. It's about showing us how he became a villain after he hired the minions. How was his formation to a supervillain came? And... The story is mainly about him trying to join his his supervillain dream team, the Vicious Six, who recently expelled literally their founder, a guy, what was his name? In the movie, they call him Willy Cobra, right? That's his name, right? Okay, so the, the Vicious Six, which I barely remember anything about them. I, they, I don't need, I only know like two of their names. I'm just going to call Bellbottom, the rollerblading guy, the, the one that was like... A crab arm, the the one our fists, and then <laughs> then the, the funniest the nun Chuck, the, there was a nun that a, a nun like religion. Okay, the, the, the okay, I'm gonna try to control myself. So 
And so Groot tries to join the Vicious Six, but the Vicious Six end up rejecting him, so he ends up stealing a stone that they stole, which was going to empower them to become the biggest villains of all time. And now that Groot has something they want, the Vicious Six are now after him. At the same time, Willy Cobras are also after him, ends up kidnapping him. So now the minions are searching for for their 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 new boss, but about the movie itself, not much of the story, but about the movie, if it's enjoyable or not, yeah, it was. It was a lot of fun. I laughed a lot in this movie. Like I was worried I wasn't gonna enjoy this movie as much as I did the first Minions movie and saw that in theaters too, or Despicable Me Three also that in theaters. But at the end, I really, I actually had a lot of moments where I just laughed. To the point I felt like my cheeks hurt because of how much I laughed. And when it comes to Despicable Me Minions, it can be a really mixed bag for a lot of people. You can say, oh, it's funny, but they're not, but they're still not great, good movies. And Rise of Guru is definitely not going to change the way you see Minions or Despicable Me. It's still in the same formula, but I like the way that the movie pull it off. It still feels like it's its own thing. Even if it still fits on the Despicable Me formula. When it comes to the first Minions movie, I see a lot of people have very divisive thoughts when it comes to it. Some people think it's good, some people think it's really bad, people think it's not worth it, but... And watching it a while ago, I definitely felt like it was a bit empty. I still found a lot of moments funny on it, and I left, definitely liked the gags. In fact, it was, it was like in what, around the 70s or the 80s? I don't remember, but the point is... And I felt like it was okay, but it was felt a bit disjointed. It felt like it, it was missing something. That something was screwed. The Despicable Me side of, well, Despicable Me. It felt like the movie was missing something important. And with Gru finally returning this one, a young Gru still played by Steve Carell, I felt like the movie felt a bit more complete. Like, this Minion story felt complete with Gru. See, he's the a kid Gru, not like the adult Gru, but I still liked him. I still feel like it definitely felt like John Gru turning into the supervillain with me in Despicable Me. And, well, apart from that, the story is pretty, fran it's pretty frantic and nuts. It goes here from there. It goes from Gru being kicked up to the minions learning Kung Fu. And uh, my favorite parts were the ones where they learn Kung Fu. Like, <laughs> I can't, I I'm not going to explain the gags. You got to see it for yourself, but... The point is, I had a lot of fun, especially with the whole learning kung fu scenes. And then I felt like the animation really did its best there. And certainly, when it cut to animation, it was definitely a standout on this movie. They felt very action-packed, one of those that can definitely keep your attention. I, th I think that was the point, especially when it comes to an anime kids movies, and usually kids won't really pay that much attention, and studios know that if they want that box off it, they gotta make sure kids can enjoy it. And I definitely feel like that's with, with the frantic and crazy, crazy speed of this movie comes into play. But what about the characters? Well, again, I liked Young Guru. Steve Carell was still great as a Young Guru. And the minions, well, I'm so glad that they just chose the core minions with, with what was it, Kevin, Bob, Stewart, and included the minion Otto, which I wonder what happened to him in Spickle Me, I don't know. But the point is, I liked it. There's only one thing I did not like, and that's, that's with one element I really disliked about this movie. And it was the, the fact that they added a fantastical element to the Spickle Me. Like, sure, the... There are some, I guess, fantastical elements already to Despicable Me, like the fact that supervillains exist, the minions exist is already weird, but you could say it was still grounded in reality. We saw that they still use technology, and the fact that in the minions we explained that, oh, they just came from the evolution, so these guys are like ancestral beings. The point is that they at least gave, you could say, a scientific logical explanation. Like, like there are super intelligent people out there that are mad scientists, and that's how the supervillain technology can work. That's how supervillains exist. And with the minions, explaining that the fact that they evolved, like they say every other creature did, it makes sense. But with adding this fantastical element of the Zodiac Stone, I did not like that. I feel like it makes Despicable Me feel a bit more generic in this world where it still had the laws it had to follow. That's why I like when when you build a world and you follow the laws you make. Like, for example, Toy Story, where when it comes to Toy Story, still, it's a granted world, but with rules, like how the toys are alive. And even if they can bend here and there, what can be considered a toy that is alive? The point is that 
They had their logics for their world, and it worked. But with Despicable Me, I feel like they're bending and even breaking the rules doing this of adding magic. And I do not like it. I do not really, I don't like magic in movies or in general. So I was disappointed in that area. I heard about the massive animal fight, but I didn't think it was magic, okay? I didn't feel like they were going to do that being magic. They never really, I, maybe the start of the movie, those minutes I lost, they referenced it. I don't know. But the point is, that's the only bit I did not like about The Rise of Gru. But apart from that, this movie was really fun. I'll give it a solid 7 out of 10. It's not a bad movie by any means, but it's not going to change the way you see the Spickle Me or Minions. Um, I, I still like them, still waiting for the Spickle Me 4, which as far as I know is still in production and coming in 2024, so we'll have to wait and see if if this will affect somehow the Spickle Me 4. But we'll just have to wait and see. Overall, I, I'm, I'm okay with the rise of Gru. I definitely see why it's being so successful, uh, but something is, I'm surprised at the fact that it's being Disney and Pixar's light year, which will be the next video I make. Since literally two days after watching Minions The Rise of Crew, I got a chance to watch Lightyear. Now, now that it, it's on Disney Plus. So that's definitely my next project. So thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give a like, comment what you thought about Minions The Rise of Guru, and subscribe if you don't want to miss any of my videos. Again, I'm gonna I'm gonna start working on my video about Lightyear and some other movies here and there that will be coming out. So thank you all so much for watching. Goodbye.